We are doing our best to very rapidly and with a large scale make uh, swabs in order to try to help detect COVID-19. Um, because as we all know, this is a major health crisis in our country and there's a, a shortage in our state and across the country of these swabs. One of our professors reached out over email and was asking if we could help develop these swabs. And so what we do is work with a lot of the materials that are used in these medical devices. Professor Jeff Moore, uh, the director of the Beckman Institute, initially contacted several of us because he, he was in contact with others in the state who knew that, that this was a major problem and were uh, trying to figure out uh, solutions. And so that's how we first came into lab. While I was sitting at home reading a lot of news, I was wondering how I can actually contribute to this goal of helping all our doctors and nurses on the front line. And then Professor Jeff Moore actually messaged me on Twitter saying, hey, we are trying to do some swab making tests and there's a shortage. If you can, would you like to help? And I immediately said yes and I came to the lab and we started brainstorming some ideas. We were trying 3D printing at first or some other kinds of molding, but nothing was working so well until the idea came from Mayank. We actually figured this process out and it was, it was his idea, he had the swab. I still think it was more of a collective idea, but everybody was improvising from one problem to the next. So there were some problems that I had no solution for, but my colleague Gia came up with a few ideas. There were some things about the availability of some of the materials that Doug pointed out, and then there were some things that Leon was carefully noting down to make sure we could do this efficiently. So that was, I think, critical that I saw everybody improvising on the spot within, within a 24 hours period. What we found uh, worked best so far was to take one of these existing products, which is this small swab, but it has the incorrect dimensions in order to be used for COVID-19 testing um, as a nasal swab. And so we are just doing a simple thermal process in order to convert this into uh, this, where this is uh, about the right dimensions that it could be inserted into someone's nose to test for the virus. We do that by basically pulling the swab longer using heat. To do this process to go from this small swab to a longer swab, roughly six inches in total height, we'll attach this small swab to the minor clips, then take this rack in the oven for our drawing process, and then we wait for roughly three minutes. The drawing for all these swabs is complete. This rack will be placed onto our cooling location to cool down, and they are almost the same length, between five and a half to six and a half inches. And when we bend these swabs, you can see that they're pretty stable qualitatively, and that's what we need. And we quickly figured out how to, how to, how to scale it up and reproducibly do it um, and so that it could be done by other people in other labs on campus as well. Over a period of, I'd say, three days, we went from having several ideas in our head to actually having a product and one that we've actually delivered to the hospital and can be tested. I cannot believe how quick this has happened. Uh, the first email that uh, we, any of us received was on Monday. Tuesday was our first day of trials. Wednesday was scaling up. We made 100 swabs that day. Uh, and then Thursday, yesterday, was the 100 swabs we were getting tested um, at the local hospital. And so then today we were making the video. So it's, it's mind-blowing how fast this process is going, but it's necessary. Especially coming from our research environment where we think, oh, this might be useful one day, but a lot of times we don't actually see it in use. So I think it's a human effort for us to combat this virus, and the more people, the better. Hopefully we can help make a difference. Within the third week of starting this project, we improved our manufacturing speed by almost 10 times, hitting the target of 100k swaps per week, which put us in a good position to now mass manufacture them if need arises. And by that time, the infection rates were a little bit more under control, and some of the 3D printed swabs had gotten FDA approval, so we came on an official halt by the end of May. But the lessons learned here definitely did not go to a waste. Sometimes, as grad students, we get stuck into this loop of we have to get everything perfect in the first go, step by step. That is not the way to think sometimes in an emergency because you need something that we can put out in the field, get some real-time feedback, and then decide which parameters you need to change. And how far do I want to go with this first solution versus the eventual solution? I would love to see these ideas go through and be refined by other people, and maybe we can get these testing delivered to multiple locations in which testing is not really readily available so easily. And that's one of the wonderful things about this project that they were simply there to buy enough time for a more permanent solution. Going in, we knew that we would really love to succeed, but we would hope that we would never need that solution 